They say never say never. I say never tell me what to do. A person will never put you in a position above them. That's never a lie, always true. Success never comes without risk and risk never comes without fear. YouTube is a smoking mirror, never how it appear. Yo, it been a while since I gave y'all a little backing video, man. So I figured I'd go on and record this one. Um, just to let y'all know that I'm a real driver out here. You know, I ain't playing no games, man. If it got hair, I can ride it. If it got gears, I can drive it. Yeah, y'all see me bend in that corner right there, right? Yeah. I don't know why they got that yellow pole right there in front of me, just messing everything up for me getting backed up. But it is what it is, you know what I mean? You just, man, <laughs> sometimes you get to these places, man, and you got to, I ain't going to really call it the impossible, but right now I got to hop out, man, go back there, check the traffic, because where I got to back up into, they don't really care if you backing up, you know what I mean? They just keep coming, keep coming, no respect whatsoever. So I always got to go back there and check, kind of make sure the coast is clear before I start backing up and... Look at my setup really and make sure my setup good because it's it's a uh, I don't know man it's it's tighter than a fish's vagina getting back off up in there but you gotta do what you gotta do. I guess that's why you know they say tanker people make the big bucks. I ain't gonna comment on that. You know, it's cool. Gotta open the door a little bit so I can see. Mm. I like looking out the door sometime. I think I got that from my buddy uh, when he taught me how to drive and his long nose Pete, you couldn't see past the stacks. And I back up, I got the hidden this tree and I'm like, whoa, that ain't gonna work. I don't know why they got that tree right there. I don't know why they won't trim that tree, but I'm like, nah, be then tore my fairing up or something at the top. So we gotta get away from that tree. I pulled up a little bit and started to back up again. And obviously, I didn't pull up far enough or I didn't cut the truck far enough because I was still like finna nip the tree. You know what I mean? I'm looking out the passenger window trying to make sure everything cool. So I had to pull up again. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna pull up a little further this time. Make sure I get away from this tree. But you see the porch in the way too. So it is what it is, man. Finally, I finally got far enough away from the tree that I felt like I was cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I... I hit it a little bit, but I don't think I broke no branches down and nothing like that. Cause you know, some of these businesses be pretty particular about their trees for some reason. They won't trim them, but if you knock some tree limbs down, they'll want to call the company on you, which it's fine if they call my company. You know, I'm sure I answer the phone, but it's going to be some pull ups here. I ain't really got this one mastered, so. It is what it is, you know. They say you're supposed to be a professional driver when you get a CDL, but they're not teaching you how to back up in the docks like this in no school or nothing like that. Like I say, luckily for me, my man, IS Transportation, who got me into driving, he had a long nose peak. So I had a lot of practice backing up with a, a, a I ain't going to call it a, I'm going to call it a terrible turn radius. You know what I mean? Because that's about what it was. So... Now I'm looking, I'm telling this guy to come on because I don't really want to hold nobody up. You know what I mean? And they'll start slide behind you or whatever. So I think this guy, I think he was like a pickup truck. Yeah, that was a pickup truck. So now I'm looking, trying to see, make sure ain't nobody else coming. Look out my passenger side. I start backing up. And next thing you know, I'm on my mirror. Another truck come. I almost hit that truck. I ain't even going to cap. He almost got it. So I was like, man, I better get out and look because... They, they doing too much now. They doing way too much. So I get out. I go over there. I look. I see what it's like. You have traffic coming from both directions. And I don't care if you got your hazards on, if they see you backing up. I don't care what it is. You see the little forklift coming through. It's heavy traffic right here in this area. And they know trucks got to back up. They Like trucks come in and out. So they know what's going on especially the people that work there but obviously it don't matter to them 
that go another truck. So I'm basically just trying to let the traffic. I'm just trying to get everybody past. So the coast is clear when I get back in the truck and I can start backing up because I can't keep stopping. You know, I'll never get in there if that's the case. And it ain't an easy dock to back into. I ain't even going to call it no dock because it really ain't no dock. It's just like we just going to call it an alley. You know what I mean? And some people probably be like, oh, this is easy to back up into and all that. Now, I got to get out again because I'm, it's some people that's kind of waiting. They waiting on me. But I'm like, nah, y'all just come on and go because I don't want to start. Then y'all get impatient and y'all try to shoot past me because I might have to pull up a couple of times to get in here. You know, you never really know how it's going to go when you back into a tight situation like this. But the best thing to do is to go slow and pull up as many times as possible. Long, like long as you don't hit none, it don't really matter how many times you pull up. It don't matter how long it take you, long as you put it in the hole. So, you know, I don't get the backing up and I'm watching both my mirrors. I got a whole bunch of stuff on my right side. I got... I got that pole on my left side that I kind of need to hug to get in there good. So once I get my tandems past that pole, I know that I'm good. That's kind of like my theory on backing down into here. So you see me open the door. I, I don't know. It's just something about looking. Now I got to get out and look because I can't see the pole on the other side, of course, you know. But I just want to get out and make sure that I got enough room to get back under the trailer without the trailer swinging wide to the right. And then eventually clipping that pole because I got that kaboom on there. Now, nah, I'm just playing. It ain't it ain't hazmat. It ain't the kaboom. It ain't the kaboom at all. But I still don't want to dent the trailer. and I don't want to have that mark on my on my record. You know what I mean? With this company or whatever. So. As you can see, I just keep I keep backing up. I take it nice and slow and I'm constantly checking both my mirrors. I'm checking both my mirrors at this point in time. I'm sure some people, you know, at the stop sign waiting on me to back up. You see, I'm going to pull forward because I got to straighten up because you got to You kind of got to come in there. Real straight and narrow, you know what I'm saying? You got to come in there about, man, I'm going to say you got to come in there at noon or about six o'clock, however you want to look at it. That's how you need to come in there. So if you got somebody that's waiting on you to pass by, you might not be able to get in there exactly how you want to, but you able to get in there enough that you could let them pass. So that's what I'm on right now. I am not as straight as I want to be, but. I'm going to let these people pass because they got stuff to do just like I got stuff to do. You know what I mean? So get in there as best I can and then just sit back and let them pass me. And then I can straighten up all the way and really, really get in there. Look at look at this stuff in front of me, though. Like that little snake that you got to do to get in there. It ain't the easiest, man. I bet you a hundred to your dollar that nine out of ten people who got their CDL couldn't back in that dock. Yeah, that's how that's how that's how confident I am about my abilities, and that's how confident I am about how hard it is to get into that dock. Especially, it probably take the average person an hour or so to get in there. I'm I'm, I'm almost sure. I don't know. It probably took me about I don't know. We don't see how long this video is, but it probably took me about 10 minutes to get. Well, I had to get out a couple times like, yeah, you see me. I just threw my hand up at dude because he was waiting on me. So I appreciate him waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? Although I'm not in there as straight as I want to be. Then there was this other guy. He was kind of mad, I think. You know what I mean? But I really didn't know what to tell him. You know what I'm saying? Like he gave me a dirty look or whatever. So, I mean, I pretty much just, man, just waved at him because, I mean, it is what it is, bro. So once he came past, you know, I was able to get situated to where I could straighten up and I can back straight back because they got to hook up these hoses. So you kind of got to be in there as straight as possible or else they're not going to be able to hook the hoses up and it's going to slow the transfer down. Now, I'm not really sure how many sleeper trucks come to this facility because that ain't really my concern. I mean, I'm only concerned about putting my truck in the hole. I mean, I'm sure if I was in a day cab, it'd be a lot different, but that ain't what I got. So I got to work with what I got. You know what I mean? So 
this is just me just trying to get it straight. And then as it, as I steady back up, you're going to be able to see like the the poles that I had to back in between. They um, as I like to say all the time, they're pretty interesting, pretty interesting. You see one on the left right there. And then the other one on the right right there. So you see the kind of S I had to make to get in there and why it's not as easy as it may look on this video. You know, but it is what it is. This is what you got to do when you when you want a hard tanker. Sometimes you get to these places and you like, I, I don't understand why y'all got me unloading in this. Like it, it makes no sense whatsoever. And if you think getting out getting in there was challenging getting out of there ain't that easy either but definitely getting out of there is a lot easier than getting in there so you know what i mean this is your boy ice water man you know so this is one of my um, it's pretty it's pretty challenging doc i guess i'll put it like that so you know what i'm saying but i get in there you know what i mean i, I get busy this is what i do put the hard hat on Get the paperwork, get the sample, get everything I need to get up out of there and uh, go on and get to the bridge. You know what I mean? Because all I'm concerned about is that sign BOL. That's all I need. I got to get this offloaded. Make sure he signed my paperwork. Make sure he print his name. Make sure he sign his name. Make sure he put the date on it so I can get to the money. That's all I care about. You know what I mean? So the back, another back in video for y'all, man. This is just your boy Ice Water 815, man. Been through a lot of pain in my life and I pray the Lord take it all away.